Hi, good day to everyone. Welcome back to our topic on other technology. This is the last topic in our elite CCIE training. Okay, so my name is Yap Chi Yuan. I'm a trainer for InfoSign in Malaysia. So without further delay, let's start the lesson. So this course, we are mainly focused on the high availability, all right, the concept of it, the securities, QoS, and some of the network management technology. Now I can say that the other technology in the HCIE track consists of um, a quite broad area. Now simply by one single topic, like for example this PowerPoint, I'm not able to cover all, so I will give you some introduction. So here we are going to learn about the technology, all right? And uh, let's start with some of the principle, all right? So the principle of high availability, okay? Then we look into the BFD, bidirectional forward detection, uh, non-stop forwarding principle, and graceful restart. Now, how do we define HA or high availability? Now, HA means that a product or system has high reliability. All right. So the features of HA include low probability of fault occurrence. So which means that the, when uh, the uh, system breaks down, the chances of it is very low. And if let's say the system it does break down and it do break down, for you to recover it, you have to be fast. So this is how we uh, calculate our availability. The formula will be mtbf divided by mtbf plus mttr. So what is mtbf? mtbf means is means time between failure. mtbf. Okay, that means that if I have a system, what's the average time in which the component or the device, all right? work without any failure okay so be, uh, if let's say i have a router okay so now it's working very good and it break down okay how long we need to estimate that this component will fail all right before the break occur so this is what we call the mtbf then we also have the mttr or mean time to repair which is average time in which fault component or device recover. This is to measure that how long for us to do a recovery. Now let me pull up a, uh, a slide over here to show you the specification of the Huawei NE for the E X16. Okay, so this is one of the product that is um, mainly placed in the core. Now if you look into the specification, all right, right here, okay, there is a system reliability. You need do uh, you see that there is a MTBF which is 21.66 years and the mean time to repair is 0 0.5 hours which is about 30 minutes and how we calculate the avail availability for these chases okay now based on our formula formula here so MTBF just now is 21.66 years so it's in term of years just now. So we are going to change it into the minutes, all right? Because the MTTR just now was 30 minutes and this is 21.66 years. So for us to calculate, we use 60 minutes times by 24 hours times by 365 days times by 21.66 years, all right? So same thing, we use the MTBF, the figure that coming here plus 30 minutes. Now according to my calculator, all right, it will show me that it is 11384496. 11384496. Plus 30. Now if you do this calculation, the percentage of the availability is 99.999736%. This is the availability for the NE40X16. Okay, now this is just an estimation. And it's very important for us to achieve high availability because if let's say you're working in the um, telco, they need at least 5.9. Now, as my earlier slide mentioned that we need to have a high availability. So the recovery must be fast as well. So we have a concept called BFD. All right, so how to reduce our recovery time or MTTR? 
So we need to have a fast detection and that is the function of BFD or bidirectional forward detection. Only when you can detect the uh, failure fast, you can recover it fast, right? So BFD is a technology that quickly detect and monitor connectivity or link, all right, of a link or IP route on the network. So you can detect as in link layer, data link, or in the network layer, IP route. So BFD control message are encapsulated in the UDP. And the port they are using is 3784. Source port will be random. So UDP in this case is that it doesn't actually use too much of an overhead and detection over here. The timer can be modified or you can actually fine tune it. Now let's just look into this example on OSBF. But uh, please remember that BFD work with uh, other protocol, all right, not only for OSBF. This is just an example. So we set our OSPF as a normal procedure. So the hello packet is being sent, the OSPF neighbor is up. Okay, so it has a full agency. Now you are going to configure the BFD, bidirectional forward detection. All right, so when the OSPF neighbor is up, okay, the BFD will kick into action. BFD now will send a hello packet. So we have a OSPF hello. We also have the BFD hello, all right, where they are using UDP 3784. Now then you ask me that, why should I actually use two-tar detection? Can I just purely use OSPF and then I'm going to fine-tune the hello timer? Yes, you can do that. But again, um, BFD work with other protocol as well. It's not just OSPF. And uh, think about it, OSPF is actually in the control plane. All right, so which means that you are going to uh, increase the CPU utilization by changing the hello packet and you are going to do it on both sides, which is on R1 as well as an R2. Whereas for the BFD, BFD work on the forwarding plane. Forwarding plane. So you can actually configure, or in this case, the BFD can be implemented on the hardware layer. Okay, rather than on the control plane. So you will take off some of the CPU burden when you are running on the BFD. And BFD, as I mentioned, that is not just purely exclusively for OSPF. You can run it on BGP, static route, ISIS, for example. Okay, so there is a lot of benefit on running BFD rather than you uh, change the uh, fast hello on the protocol itself. Okay, now assuming that now everything is fine, so BFD is running, OSPF is also running. Now, when there is a problem happen, assuming that the link layer here fail, okay, now the first that detect will be the BFT, able to detect there's a failure in, in terms of milliseconds. Okay, now when the BFT detected that there is a problem, it's going to notify the OSPF that the neighbor is down. Now, even though the OSPF have a hello packet that is actually being sent, but OSPF is going to depend on the BFT for a status of their neighbor. Now, when the BFT uh, state that the neighbor is down, the OSPF neighbor is going to uh, fail and they are going to look into the routing table for the next hop that is available. So the switchover will be very fast. So this is how we can achieve the MTTR. Okay, now let's look into the BFD session management. All right, so the establishment of the BFD. Now the state of BFD include down state, init state, and up state, or else you can administratively shut it down. Okay, so below diagram show you the three-way handshake mechanism to do the establishment and the disconnection of the BFD. So at first, R1 and R2 is in down state because we still have not configured BFD. Now, once you enable the BFD, all right, so from the down state, when R2 receive it, it will go into the init state on both R1 and R2. From the init state, it will go into the up state. All right, so these are the three states that we have on the BFD is pretty straightforward, down state, init state, and the up state. All right, so BFD can be implemented on a lot of uh, scenario. So you can implement on the uh, IP link, okay? 
it can be on the status when the status go to down the BFD will actually flag it as down state it can be applied to your static RIP OSBF ISIS as well as the BGP okay so please remember that the uh, BFD have uh, many usage now next I'm going to show you the BFD with the OSBF all right so let's jump back into our ENSP here I have a simple topology R1 and R2 belong to OSBF area 0. R1 connected through two interfaces. One is through the gig 00 and is connected through the intermediate switch. Now this is a uh, layer 2 switch. All right, so currently this is a VLAN 1. And the second interface is connected using the serial 100. Now since OSBF by default will prefer the lower cost, it will prefer the uh, gig 00 as the primary link. And the secondary link will be 0100. So let's just check the uh, configuration. Now, firstly, all right, so here our IP address. So the gig 00, we have 1012. Okay, the loopback is quad one, and the serial is 10112. All right, and I do have a peering on both the interfaces. All right, and uh, on my OSBF, I'll just simply configure as area zero and enable all the interfaces under the area zero. So when I do a trace to the router two, you can see that it's going to use the 1012. And when I do a routing table, you can see that for me to go to two, is actually using the next hour of 10 12, 0, 2, which is on the chop here. Okay, now uh, for this demonstration on the BFD, I'm going to show you without the BFD. So I'm going to do a ping continuously. Let's say I'm going to ping 1000 times to quad 2, all right, and let it run. And please remember that on the router 2, all right, I still have the peering. Okay. And on this particular interface, you can see that the hello timer is every 10 seconds and the dead timer is 40 seconds. So if let's say I'm going to disable the uh, interface, all right, but that is on the layer 2, but not on the link, but on the VLAN, that's why I'm using a switch here. I'm going to switch from VLAN 1 to VLAN 2 and I want the dead timer to kick in. So it will take 40 seconds to kick in. All right, so for me to do this, uh, simulation you can see that the ping is still running I will go into the switch all right as you can see that all the VLAN is under the VLAN 1 so I'm going to put the gig 2 into VLAN 2 all right so I'm going to put into VLAN 2 now all right and see what will happen okay so you can see that straight away is time out the interface is still up all right it's just that now the uh, VLAN 1 on the gig 001 and VLAN 2 on gig 002 so render them not able to communicate then the OSBF will time out based on the dead timer which is exactly 40 seconds before they switch over to the serial 100 now you notice that in between over here this is our downtime now remember on our HA theory we want to minimize the mean time to repair Okay, so you can see from here, I have about 10.45% packet loss. So out of the 153 packet, I only received 137 packet and my neighbor is not seen. So if I go to router one, you can see that only the interface on serial one, all right, that is working. And when I do a trace, all right, so right, right now it's actually going through the 112. As you can see that the uh, uh, loss is quite significant. All right, that will be 40 seconds of loss. That's black hole, all right, it's dropped. Okay, even though we have a second link over here. Now, right now we are going to enable the BFD and we are going to do a comparison before and after. All right, so let's go back to R1. The first thing for us to configure is BFD that will enable the BFD on the global all right the system view all right so that is enabled 
And secondly, we have to enable on the OSBF view. So we just do a BFD, all interfaces enable. Okay. Now this is just a um, simulator problem. So that's that's not a problem. Okay. So that is the the issue with the ENSP. It will not affect our normal uh, BFD. So again, OSBF, BFD, all interface enable. Now by default, once the BFD is enabled, you can see that the hello packet will be running. Okay, so I'm going to do a um, git one one. Okay, and I'm going to show you here that the BFD is running. Now please remember that under the switch, okay, I'm still having a BFD. Sorry, I'm still having the interface on the VLAN two. So the BFD currently is only running on the serial interface. Okay, display VLAN. As you can see that this is under the gig two. So if I go back to router one and do a display BFD session all, all right, you can see that the BFD only run on session one zero zero. All right, because we are still in a different VLAN here. Okay, so my Wireshark currently is running. Okay, as you can see that these are the uh, OSBF that is actually sending, but there is no uh, peering that is formed because uh, on the left here I have VLAN 1, on the right here I have VLAN 2. So I'm going to switch back to VLAN 1 and I'm going to show you the BFD session. Okay, so let me go back into the port default VLAN 1. Okay, so once the VLAN 1 is connected, all right, we should be able to see that the hello on the uh, OSBF, there you go, all right, that is actually forming. And uh, later part, you are able to see that the BFD will be available as well. Okay, so we have the OSBF, all right, I'm waiting for the BFD, there you have it. So you can see that the BFD is currently running. All right, so just to show you the BFD, okay, as in the earlier on, I mentioned that the BFD, is based on the UDP. As you can see that is 3784. Notice that the uh, byte that is running is pretty small. You can see that only 66 byte that is being captured. So it doesn't use too much of your uh, bandwidth. So this is the BFD configuration. Now as you can see over here, this is my interval, all right? 13,500 millisecond, okay? And that's my multiplier. So in actual effect, the BFD over here is actually using a uh, 13,500 millisecond, which is actually quite long. It's actually more than a second. All right, so what we're going to do here is that we are going to make it faster. All right, but uh, just to show you here that my BFD is actually running, display BFD session all. You can see that it's actually running on both 10, 12, and 10, 1, 1, 2, the state is up. Okay, so this is my discriminator ID for both the local and the remote. And just now I'll also show you the uh, BFD. Now, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to do the same thing by doing the ping. Okay, and I'm going to do a switch over to VLAN 2 now. All right, so let's see how many time out. All right, you can see that it's quite fast. As in compared to the earlier one, now definitely because the number of packets I'm pinging is less. All right, now straight away you can see that there's only about two packet loss. Now we still can actually fine tune this to have no packet loss. If you still remember earlier on, I told you that the BFD that I'm using is in term of a second. So let's do a display BFD session all I'm going to look for the Vibros. All right, so you can see that the um, the BFD here, this is my minimum receive and minimum uh, transmit, okay? And you can see that the detect interval is three seconds. All right, so this, this is the uh, actual one, all right? And this is the detect three times, okay? So if let's say I have the failing on three seconds, it will, you know, tell the OSBF that my neighbor is actually is not available. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to change back this to VLAN 1 again. Okay, I'm going to change my interval on both router 1 and router 2 to use a sub-second. Alright, now uh, by mean of the sub-second means that if let's say I have a multiplier of 3, as in the default, so if I'm going to use let's say 100 millisecond, so 3 times of 100 millisecond is only 300 millisecond, so which means that the failure will able to detect in about 300 millisecond. So in theory, my ping are not supposed to lose any packet at all. Alright, so this is how you can do that. So go back to my OSPF, I will say that BFD, all session, I'm going to do a minimum uh, receive interval. You can see that the minimum is 10 milliseconds up to maximum of 2 seconds. So I'm going to do 100. And the minimum transmit interval is also 100. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Alright, and I'm going to do it on router 2 as well. Okay, and I'm going to paste it there. There you go. Alright, so let us check our BFD. Webros. Now you can see that this is better, 100, 100, the actual detect interval is 300 milliseconds. So in theory, we should not able to have any ping loss. Okay, so let's do it now. So I'm going to ping again to 2 to 2, okay, 1000 time. Alright, it's running. BFD are supposed to be running. Display BFD session all. Okay, that's good, it's running. And I'm going to switch over to VLAN 2 now and see what happened. So VLAN 2, alright, so you can see that the neighbor is down. Okay, so you can see that they do have a timeout here. Alright, so you can see that now I have only one packet. Alright, one packet lost. Now this is due to the simulator and it's not really uh, reflect the actual practical. So in actual practical, you should not able to see any packet loss. So now you can see that the BFD work with OSPF and it reduce the mean time to repair because in this case, my OSPF is still running and it run over the serial interface and this is the proof. Okay, so you can see that the next hop is 112 and the cost is 48. So as compared to earlier on, if I just rely on the OSPF based on the timeout, or in this case, the whole time ti uh, time expired, it will require them to have 40 seconds. And if I just configure the BFD without any configuration, it will use about 3 seconds. And if I'm going to fine tune it further, I'm able to fill over in less than a second. So that is the benefit of a BFD. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.